So this is a big one, the rich editor. Now what we did is we built a new tip tap. Base. Let's go, tip tap for the win. In filament four, you can use double curly braces and it will open merge tags that you define. These are similar, but they're custom blocks. Stream, uh, this is cool. And then you can insert block. Now, what we have here is we have a preview of the block. Now the preview is a blade view that gets rendered on the server. You pass through the config <laughs> and it essentially sends it to tip tap and it renders it out. You can use this class here, pass through your HTML and then do two HTML and it's gonna render the content as HTML. This stream is getting ridiculous by how much stuff we are getting on Filament 4, honestly. What's up everyone, it's Nunu here. If you enjoy the PHP content I produce, please like the video and subscribe the channel. Only 50% of the viewers actually are subscribers of my channel and I'm trying to reach 20k subscriber by the end of July. Thank you so much and enjoy the video. So this is a big one the rich editor. So we have a rich editor. We've had it since version one. Um, it's always used tricks and tricks is a JavaScript library built by Basecamp. It basically is a pre-built rich editor. It's pre-styled. Um, all of the functionality is already built, built in. Now what we did is we built a new tip tap. Base. Let's go tip tap for the win. And we got tip tap here. Oh my God. Best decision we could have made. Tip yes. Tap is incredible. It is. Uh, we also have um a way to render content so um basically uh, using where is it rendering rich content so you can use this class here pass through your html and then do two html and it's gonna render the content as html so you can pass through your attachments disk um, and it's gonna process that content and turn it into html wow dude um yeah, yeah. It's, so, it's it's just this stream is getting ridiculous by how much stuff we are getting on filament for honestly because yeah. I was expecting like the performance stuff to be the big thing and that's it. And then you had like small stuff. Oh, big yeah, is no. the change log. Honestly, this is just so uh, big. The change, logs, the change log is huge. Like, um, I think there's like 2,500 commits to V4 <laughs> from V3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my um, God. And that's over like a year and a half's work of it, every, basically every day working on version four. So um, absolutely, so awesome, there's more yeah. on that. There's more on the rich editor we can talk about. So uh, more things. So to start with, uh, merge tags. So merge tags are a concept that I've had to build for um, the apps that we have at work. So we're sending emails at work, and we use templates to uh, define. Um, emails that get sent to customers, right? But the template can be used across multiple customers. So um, we want to insert information about the customer or the email into the rich content and then render that out. So in Filament 4, you can use double curly braces and it will open merge tags that you define for your rich editor. So show you what that looks like using merge tags. You can pass in the name of merge tags, okay, into the, into the editor. You can then use like keyboard to choose uh, which one you want to insert like that. You can search uh, and you click enter and it inserts the merge tags. So there's no manually typing merge tags out. Uh, if you backspace them, it backspaces the entire <laughs> thing instead of it going like halfway through. So it's like a whole block. And you can click this button here, this merge tag icon, and you can drag in merge tags into the editor as well. So this is great for like non-technical users. Uh, it works with all of the different like styling options we have as well. It's just so ridiculous that this stuff yep. is free. Like, <laughs> And uh, when you're rendering rich content, you can pass through data for the merge tag. So um, this is the name of the merge tag that you defined previously. And then this is like what it should be replaced with in the content. One minute of silence. Just this is insane, <laughs> man. Honestly, it, pff, I can imagine like the reactions on Laravel Live UK because, oh, yeah. you know, yeah, just, you know, this is absolutely awesome. Honestly, um, by the way, Shad, I'm doing um, I still need to ask permission for then, but um, I'm doing possibly a YouTube video to publish next Monday just about this demo that you just made about filament and honestly you, i may have stuff here to do two videos or more i don't even know um and you know if that video reaches a thousand likes shed a thousand likes on the filament video that i'm going to post produce after this live stream i promise you i'm going to do a full week about filament okay because I, I need to dive into this stuff it's just ridiculous i need to start using this stuff so um you know if those filament videos that i will publish on my youtube channel get a thousand likes and i repeat a thousand likes i'm going to do a full week of streaming just about filament i promise you that <laughs> nice so i've got a few more things for rich editor so these are merge tags uh merge tags are okay 
they're quite static, um, but they're really useful. These are similar, but they're custom blocks. Now, I've just got one block defined here. Um, a custom block is a PHP class you define in your app. So it extends the rich content custom block, and it has an ID and it has a label. How it works is you drag it in, uh, and you choose where it um, gets inserted in, and it has a configuration. So you can use any of the uh, filament, modal, configuration options, and form inputs to define configuration for the block. Hello, stream. Uh, this is cool. And then you can insert the block. Now, what we have here is we have a preview of the block. Now, the preview is a blade view that gets rendered on the server. You pass through the config, <laughs> and it essentially sends it to TipTap, and it renders it out. So this isn't stored in the um, content of the rich editor. This is purely just for like the editing experience. What does get stored is a JSON string of the config for that block. So it is basically just the configuration, no preview. So if you ever update the preview, it just it, it works, right? You can go through and like edit the block and it gets reinserted. You can define as many blocks as you want. Um, you can drag them around, like you can change their position if this would this would work. Um, you can delete them. Um, and there are lots of different options. So you can define like the label for the block above the preview. You can also render uh, like a permanent view for that block as well. So um, in this case, we're using the renderer that we used before. We're passing through the custom blocks and we're using this 2HTML method. And this is like the permanent view of the block. So if you're using like this as a CMS, you could define blocks for different parts of your homepage. And then you could have like each homepage section as a block. And then you just pass through the config into that view. Basically. Insane. Now we've got the config and this is coming from the rich content that we get stored in the database. We also have data. Now data is like on demand stuff that you can inject into that uh, stuff. That's such a bad word. On demand <laughs> <laughs> parameters that you can pass into the view. Um, through the uh, rich content renderer. So if you pass through like the block name and then just an array of data that you can then access mm, gotcha. um, in the view. So it means that like uh, if you need to like dynamically generate a URL on demand, you can do that. Uh, it doesn't get stored in the in the HTML. One usage I see about this, I don't know if it was already possible on Filament 3, I assume not, is that I can literally design all my static pages, but not only design them, I can also customize them on production by going to the admin panel and just customize a little bit the blocks, the configuration, change the contact email, for example, change a few names, add someone else to the team. I can do all of that on the admin panel directly. Um, crazy. This is also new. Blocks, everything. It's this. The, all this stuff yeah, is new. Yeah, because it we we couldn't do this without TipTap. TipTap is incredible, um, and it's so extensible that all of these are essentially like custom extensions for TipTap. I'm doing uh, Chad. I'm doing three YouTube videos about this stuff because honestly, no way I'm doing one YouTube video with all these goodies. I'm like literally squeezing this to the nail of three YouTube videos to my channel because one about performance, another one about <laughs> sliders, another one about blocks in TipTap. Oh my lord, man. Okay. So I've got one one last, uh, I've got two things. Um, first thing is attributes. Now, if you have all this config, like you can define the config on the renderer, you can define it on the editor, and it's kind of like a duplicate entry really, cause like you're doing it in two places at once. Maybe you have like multiple editors for the same attribute across the app, right? Or you're rendering the content multiple times. You can define attributes on the model, define like the configuration for that attribute in the rich editor. So. All of this configuration is going to be used whenever you render uh, the rich content for the attribute mm -hmm. or when you use an editor for the attribute. So it's one place to define configuration for every way you're using it. Uh, and you can pass through like merge tags. Like say you have um, merge tag for attribute on the current model, you can do that and you can just pass it through from this. And this is the current model that's rendering. So when you want to render an attribute on a, on a, on a model, you can just pass uh, this method render rich content on the model and it will just generate the HTML for it. Now, it's just a really easy way to to do that. And if you use um, the built-in text column and text entry in, in Filament, you it does that for you um, if we detect it. Automatically, no. And finally, you can define uh, extensions for the rich editor. So this isn't just like what we're building internally into Filament. Um, 
you can create plugins for the rich editor that expose certain PHP extensions uh, to the PHP side of things, uh, JavaScript extensions that get loaded asynchronously into the, so this is like when the editor's loaded, it gets uh, a separate request gets made to the JavaScript file to load it in. There's no like bundle or anything. Especially, especially because those JavaScript, uh, especially when attached to TipTap, they are huge. Like we're talking yeah. about half of a megabyte just on yeah, JavaScript. Yeah. So it's kind of cool that you have this section here and then only download them effectively when people are visualizing those um, yeah. rich content. Uh, yeah. And you can define additional tools and things to add to the toolbar as well um oh, that's and it. like action modals and things that you want to expose and you just like render those uh, sorry you register those on the on can the you editor. show me can you go all the way up so i can see how you define a button Are you, you were just there uh, i think yeah th tool. this yeah, one yeah so nice. tool object with a js handler so this is just being able to interact with the tipped up js directly yep and then just pass an icon you know which can also be my own icon if I want to. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool stuff, man. TipTap, basically, it's a headless um, toolkit for building um, rich editors like this one. Um, we've been able to implement a lot of new features because it's so dynamic and allows so much like flexibility and extendability. Now, images in the old rich editor are public. It Basically, what it does is when you drag an image into mm -hmm. the rich editor or upload it, it will send it to the back end, store it on the disk, and then it will return back a public URL for that image. And that's okay because it's really easy and it means that you can just copy that URL and use it anywhere and it's permanent. It's kind of what GitHub does. GitHub does exactly the same. It just immediately uploads it. But what happens if maybe you're not actually just rendering like blog content? Mm -hmm. For example, like maybe you're doing like internal content that cannot be in the public disk. Now, Filament um, is actually able to generate a private signed URL for images dynamically in a rich editor. So what happens is when you upload it, it gets stored in temporary storage in Livewire. When you submit the rich editor, then it will put it on the private disk and it will return temporary URLs. Now those temporary URLs are used for rendering, but they're never used for storing the, the uh, content because temporary URLs are temporary. Like they can't be used uh, for more than 30 minutes, 24 hours, whatever. Mm -hmm. What we do store in the HTML is a data ID attribute on images, and that stores like the private path to the image um, in storage. So it means that we can actually go through all of the content in the, in the rich editor, find all of the private images and convert those URLs into temporary URLs when we want to render. That's so an ink. Private. That's a crazy smart technique. Let me let me try to understand if I actually got it. So if people are they have access to visualize the content, then you can infer that they also should have access to visualize the image. Therefore, you create a signed URL on the fly so people can actually visualize that image, which is still stored privately, but it's public for the guy visualizing the article or whatever yes. this is. Yeah, so it's all done on the server. So we've got basically a- That's very smart. Um, but we've basically got a JSON blob of the entire content. And we go through that and we find all of the images um, that are private and we generate that. Also, if you use like Sparty Media Library, do you know like the Sparty? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely yeah. do, yeah. Yeah, so people have never really been able to do that with rich content um, because it's all like associating images into models and things. And like, how do you go through the HTML and like mm -hmm. find all the image, like the URLs? You just can't do that really. Um, what we've got is um, an integration for uh, media library so instead of it storing the private path in the data ID, it will store the ID of the media library object. So it means that like we dynamically go to media library and we generate the URL, put it into the HTML so that it renders out. Um, and it's still stored in media library. We don't store the URL in the content. It just gets done uh, when you load the content into the editor. Um, okay, that's it for that's it for rich editor. Let's stop. Um, let's stop a little bit, Chad. Let's a round of applause just for the tip tap rich editor we are going to have here on Filament Four. I see a lot of like honestly, I see a lot of possibilities in Chad. I'm going to give you an idea already. I think one of you at home should literally create a starter kit that will use the rich editor to define static pages. You know what I mean? The static kit will be basically about allowing people to create pages and serve those pages statically 
and you are going to create those pages directly from this uh, rich editor, which which is super powerful. Honestly, the blocks, um, everything you showed here uh, tells me that this is highly customizable, which is also one of the challenging things when you are using TipTide directly. Um, you know, rich editors are always a nightmare. <laughs> uh, we have a, a few on Laravel Cloud 2, and so I know exactly what we are talking about. The one where the pain is tolerable, I feel, is definitely the tip top and um you know having this php api for this is absolutely awesome um you know congratulations man this is absolutely awesome another great feature Thanks. of filament 4